let me uh, let me tell you a little something about myself. My name is Jackie Castillo. I come from a fairly large family. I have one brother, three sisters. There was five of us growing up. Childhood for me was pretty normal. I had a mom and a dad. My dad worked outside the house. Um, he worked really hard to provide for the family. My mom stayed home with the kids and did the mom stuff. Um, so growing up, my childhood was pretty normal. When I was about 20 years old, I was in, I was in college, I was working. I ran into an old junior high friend of mine that I had the biggest crush on when I was in junior <laughs> high. So we chit-chatted for a little bit, we exchanged numbers, and um, we kind of became exclusive. We were, he was my boyfriend, we dated for about a year, and one month I missed my period. So that following July 1999, I gave birth to a healthy eight pound baby boy. Life was awesome at that point. At that point, I had a good job. I was able to provide for my son. I had a made like a big support system. Um, his, even though his dad and I did not live together, he was still very, very present. He made sure we had everything we needed. He was, he was a great dad. Um, fast forward about six months, those everyday visits became shorter and fewer in between. So after six months, I guess you would be able to call me a single mom while I was raising my son on my own. Um, I did a very, very good job of it, but it was a little bit more difficult because I was a single mom at that point. So five years later, my cousin was in the fire academy and I had a birthday party. He asked if he can bring some of his single friends and, you know, for my friends because I wasn't looking for anything serious, but I met this guy there that my cousin introduced me to. He was, um, they were in the fire academy together. He was going to be a fireman. Uh, he pursued me for a few months until I gave in and we started dating exclusively. He met my son maybe about three, four months later and he did more for my son in three months than his dad did his entire life. So I thought, oh my gosh, this is it. He's a good man, he's a good dad. Um, again, life was good. Um, about two years later, I, I, we had uh, our first son. Um, although we were living with his mom and like it wasn't really I, the ideal situation, we were still doing really, really good. I had a second, a third son at that time. Um, I had a loving husband and a great provider, and again, my support system was phenomenal. I was still in school, I was trying to finish up my nursing degree. Um, so to the outside world, everything was good. I was, I looked like I was living my best life. But behind closed doors, it was the total opposite. You see, although my husband had many great qualities, those were overshadowed by his controlling, manipulative look self. He slowly started to control everything that I did. I was no longer allowed to spend time with my single friends. Slowly over time, I lost all my friends. Even my family started to be off limits to him. If my sister was having a birthday party for one of my nieces, he would come up with a million reasons why we should not attend. And it just became exhausting to fight him on this. So eventually, I would just give in. Over the years, my self-esteem suffered. I didn't feel pretty anymore. I gained so much weight. It made me feel unattractive. I wasn't performing well at work anymore. I was starting to get disciplinary actions because I was either missing too much work or I was constantly late. Inside, I was falling apart. But still to the outside world, everything was great. I was fine. I was still able to take my kids to school. I was still, I was still in school. I, I just went on every single day. But it, every day, it just ate, it ate at me and ate at me. I, um, I was having constant migraines, low energy. I didn't feel like myself. I went, I went to the doctor several times. I was just desperate to find some answers as to what was going on. But everything came back normal. My tests were normal. Um, there was just nothing physically wrong with me. She, 
My doctor then suggested a, a very effective three-week group therapy. She said I was, it was a three-week, it was a three-week group therapy, and what really sold me, to be really honest, was the fact that I would be able to take three weeks off of work. I needed that. I needed that. When I entered the program, wow, it literally saved my life. I learned that not only was I depressed, but I also suffered from anxiety. I learned coping skills on how to manage management. I was put on antidepressants. Um, it's, it's just amazing how God puts certain people in your path when you really need them. I met this man, we'll call him Ron. And um, I learned a lot from Ron. It helped me understand why my husband acted the way he did, or why he would react certain ways. Um, Ron was a mirror image of my husband. So it kind of, it, it did put a lot into perspective. His, his behavior was, is unexcusable, and I'll never excuse it, but it did give me a lot of understanding as to why. So gaslighting. Gaslighting is a form of psychological manipulation that seeks to sow seeds of doubt in targeted individuals or members of a, tar of a targeted group, making them question their own memory, perception, and sanity. So in a nutshell, I was suffering from gaslighting. And y'all, I mean, the fact that they defined and diagnosed me, it just opened my eyes. And it was empowering, and I searched the internet, I read books, I went to seminars, and I just, although it's sad, it was very, very empowering, because I wasn't crazy after all, right? Because this whole time I'm thinking, oh my God, I am crazy. So what is domestic violence? According to the National Domestic Violence Hotline, domestic violence, also known as intimate partner violence, is domestic abuse or relationship abuse in a pattern of behaviors used by one partner to maintain power and control over another partner in an intimate relationship. Domestic violence does not discriminate. It's anyone, any race, any age, sexual orientation, religion, or gender. Anybody can be a victim. It can happen to people who are married, living together, um, or who are dating. It affects all people of social economical backgrounds and education levels. So this just does not discriminate. Some of the tactics the abusers will use on their victims are, for example, isolation. They will isolate them from their friends or family, any, anybody who is there to support them. They act overly jealous and possessive. They accuse of having affairs. Um, they criticize. Uh, they threaten, intimidate, harass. They'll use the children to punish her or him. Um, most uh, most women uh, most women experience emotional abuse than physical violence. Thirty five percent of women who are in a married or common law relationship experience emotional abuse in comparison to 29 people that have been sexually assaulted. So emotional abuse happens way more often than physical abuse. And I think, I think these men just justify their abuse by saying, well, I've never laid a hand on you, so I'm not doing anything wrong. But abuse is still abuse. I enrolled myself in many classes and support groups that I possibly could. I, if they had anything to do with domestic violence, I was there. I was front row, I wanted to learn everything about it. Uh, what I learned from sitting in a, in a room full of battered women um, was that most of us felt that we'd rather have been kicked, slapped, punched, instead of being physically assaulted because the long-term effects of emotional abuse is, is horrendous. It causes um, self, uh, we doubt our self-worth, 
we suffered from depression and anxiety. And this just goes on for forever, as long as you, you know, if you, if you allow it. Um, I think a lot of us, a lot of men think that, or women that are abusing, think that um, since they're not physically putting a hand on us, that they're not breaking any laws. Um, one night, I had endured hours and hours and hours of being called. Everything from a bee to a whore and everything in between. I was stupid, dumb, lazy, fat, ignorant. And I thought I had enough, so I called 911. The dispatcher asked me if my husband was under the influence of drugs or alcohol, if there was a weapon in the house, or if he was being physically violent. So I answered no, because he wasn't on drugs, he wasn't drunk, we didn't have any weapons in the house. So he says, well then ma'am, I'm sorry, there's nothing we can do. It's not against the law to yell at someone. My, hat, my heart shattered and I felt just so defeated. So, let that sink in for a minute. I am standing here with my head held high to let everybody know that you are not going crazy. What you are feeling today is very, very real. And you can survive this. You are worth it. Your children are worth it. I know the feeling of, will I make it financially? Who's gonna look at me differently? I am a failure. Trust me, I, I know all these things. They're very, very, very loud in my head. And I have to work very hard to keep those thoughts quiet. I wish I can tell you all that one day you're gonna wake up and it's gonna be rainbows and butterflies, but it, it doesn't happen that way. It takes time to love yourself. It takes time to see light after darkness. But I am standing here before you to let you know that it can happen. I still have my three healthy boys and I can proudly say that I've survived an emotionally abusive marriage and so can you.